Welcome back to the Reverbian Podcast. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Sean. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, sir. We're going to try and make this... That was really bad. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to try and make this a little quicker because... A, you may have realised that we're doing it a day late, if 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 you care. Um, Many apologies. Yeah, and B, we have to make this a bit shorter, possibly, possibly. Um, Again, many apologies. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell which side of that is co- is coming from. Um, but our main topic for today will be the uh, Hall of Fame uh, for the Premier League, and we'll talk about the nominees and who we think. Um, out of, like we'll pick six out of that for our own personal uh, opinions of who should go in, and it'll be well, right. who should be next. Cause we who have should be next? Who should be next? Yeah. Um. So I have a list of stuff to go through, but uh, Sean, where do you think we should start? What have you got on your uh, your agenda? Uh. Well, we'll start with we'll start with some video games. Okay. I think switch it up. We don't usually start with those. Mm-hmm. I'll start. With, um. We had the release. Our Pokemon Snap last week. We mentioned it. They would come out the day that the last podcast um, released. The new Pokemon Snap. Um, this one. There we right go. Here. Getting some product placement. Yeah. Don't sue us, Nintendo, please. So we've shown the Nintendo logo. They're going to shut us down. Um, <laughs> you can't even say the word without being shut down by them. Uh, um, but no, it's been released. Um, it's a bit mixed, I think, what, how people have received it. Well, um, it got review bombed heavily on Metacritic by fans fans and a lot of the reviews were basically i expected an open world game where you get to take pictures of pokemon and my reply is did you not play the original game <laughs> well do, you can't say that because there's obviously a lot of people that wouldn't like i never did no no but um, i'm saying you can't complain about the game if you went into it thinking that despite all of the the they they always said it would be like the original the footage showed oh, it would yeah, be like the be... original <laughs> all the yeah. trailers like you can't say so that's where yeah. i was gonna back up is that if you looked at the like any trailers or anything then you would have seen that that's not the case yeah and if or you read anything about the games coming out that's not the case um so i don't agree with that that they're saying those reasons i could understand mm-hmm. if they were saying it in a way they would have hoped for that in the game, then fair enough. Like, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. Um, it would have been nice to have that sort of thing, uh, to be able to just free roam, have more freedom in like the angles and the pictures you can take. Um, but you can't mark the game down for not being that when the game was never supposed to be that. Yeah. In, in my personal opinion, you've got to rate the game on what the game is going to be and what it is um, and how it was always supposed to be. You can't mark it down because it's something you wanted it to be that it was never going to be mm-hmm. if that makes sense maybe it not does. maybe it does it does sure. um i played a, i played a bit of it not too much um personally enjoying Same. it um it took uh so it's one thing that i've been saying it without exploring anything about the game or anything like that um i think the best way to ex- describe it is it's a game that's easy to play but difficult to master and complete which is mm-hmm. quite, it's quite in line with Pokemon games, I think, of yeah. the, um, they've never been difficult games to play, but to do things like complete the Pokedex or to do these additional things that are in the game, it takes time, um, and it takes additional, in the main game, obviously it takes additional things, you might need another person to trade with, blah, blah. But obviously in this, um, if you want to get all, like the one star, two star, three star, four star, and all at the highest level, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of repetition of doing the same routes and trying out different things and, yeah, just keep going through it. So it is very repetitive and you end up, you feel like you're just taking the same pitch over and over again yeah. uh, quite quickly. But it's just how the game's designed for me. It's, it's how it was supposed to be. I'm not going to knock it down for it because although I would like more areas, there's no reason, especially because they've done DLC for the main games, there's no reason they can't do that now. Um, I know there have been rumours about that there could be um, some DLC for it, not confirmed. Um, one of the main reasons is... Be- 
So I wouldn't be surprised. I think the main reason people are talking about it is because there aren't any shiny Pokemon in this um in this new game. So people were saying it may be a later of an update or DLC where they go, okay, here's some more Pokemon, here's some new areas, and also they put shinies into it, which I can definitely see happening. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I th- um, so I would have liked a few more areas. I think that's the only downside um, because I don't think you get a huge amount of areas for the price tag. I haven't, um, I haven't across, unlocked them all, so I have no idea. But say so, neither have I. But yeah, I think personally, if I wasn't like someone who just no matter what was going to get this game and play it. I think I'll be a little disappointed with it being a fifty pound price tag, but at the same time, mm-hmm. um, I also like. I don't think the Pokemon Company have ever made a game that isn't like retail price of a full game. So, yeah, I, don't... I mean, so apart from when they bring stuff out like Cafe Mix or whatever, which is like free or it's it is more of like an indie game, or I yeah. think maybe Rush wasn't a. Uh, that exp- like expensive or link or something like that, those smaller ones. Fair enough. But then the this was made as a full title sort of thing. So I kind of get the price point, but personally for me, I don't think it's worth fifty pounds. I'd have liked a bit more, but I'm still enjoying it. It's yeah, it's it's not a bad game yeah. by any means. Um well, yeah, well, we'll move on to a bit of a Resident Evil Village release news. It's out. Woo! I've got all the product placement here. Steelbook, if anyone's interested. Um, but yeah, it's out, and people can uh, be happy because they get to see their tall uh, vampire lady that everyone loves, um, <laughs> that everyone's all over. But yeah, any Resident Evil fans will probably know it's out. If you didn't know, it's out. Uh, but we'll move swiftly on to a lot of uh, Call of Duty news. And also Activision news. Um, but we'll start off with a bit of Call of Duty news. There is a new tactical rifle in uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Call of Duty Warzone um, called the Carve. It looks overpowered like all of the tactical rifles did. And they haven't learnt their lesson. So get in there before it gets nerfed. <laughs> but there was some big news regarding Activision this week. Um, it sort of stemmed from, like, they did some sort of conference. Uh, I don't I don't exactly remember what it was. But um, it, there was stuff coming out about the developers behind Crash Bandicoot 4 who uh they're called toys for bob and they have been tasked with um no longer doing crash bandicoot or any sort of game like that but they're um now supporting developers for call of duty warzone as is every other activision studio apparently (laughs) there every single one of them is working on it and you wouldn't know because it's (laughs) a fucking load of shit most of the time but (laughs) it's happening um there was also reports of potential layoffs at Toys for Bob, which stems some controversy, but Activision have denied that. I haven't seen anything else come about from that, so I'm just going to assume that this was just... It just didn't happen, but you never know. Um, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to go either way. But yeah, that is the Call of Duty news for now. Oh, there is more, sorry. The fact that Activision came out and said that it wants all its biggest um, future fran- franchises to be like Call of Duty. So I think they want to go for like the Battle Pass style of route and um, yeah, <laughs> go go from there. I don't really know what their biggest franchises, like how they could adapt to that. I can't really think of any of their f- biggest franchises other than Call of Duty at the moment, except yeah. for, <laughs> like, Activision Blizzard stuff. So you got, like, your Warcrafts and stuff like that. Um, and uh, what was they? Oh, is Valorant part of that? Uh, oh, my God. Is Valorant Activision? Oh, I need to look this up. 
because that's the big game I'm out quickly there, checking. Riot Games. Riot Games, are they owned by Activision? <laughs> It's oh, like no. playing the Wikipedia Stop. game. Um... <laughs> oh, they're owned by Tencent, aren't they? So not 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 Valorant then, um, but like big games like that style that Activision own, we'll probably see a uh, branding of the this kind of Call of Duty style that we all come to know and love. It's not bad. It's just I wish they'd. They'd be like, oh yeah, all our developers are working on this one game. Have you fixed this one bug that's been around for a month? No, we're getting to it. Oh, we fixed it. Oh, sorry, no, apparently it's still in the game. Um, which is what happened this week as well. Where they apparently fixed the uh, glitch that allowed players to get underneath Stadium and uh, shoot players from above. Uh, until streamers found out that they did not in fact fix it. And that you could still do it. <laughs> so, woo. Um, I've also just realised we've got one bit of uh, one more bit of Call of Duty news. Oh God! Which is um, Activision confirmed that the next Call of Duty will in fact be made by Sledgehammer Games. I know we said that that wasn't the case, but they have. Whether that wasn't the case back then and now it is. Is a different and story. They tweeted a great under- Undertaker gif to uh, yeah. announce that. <laughs> I think I think the point staying. was we knew they were kind of dead in the water, but then um, Activision might have just given them a bit of life. So yeah, expect the next Call of Duty game to be made by Sledgehammer and will also be integrated into Call of Duty Warzone, which was something they made clear. So yeah. Um... Have I got any more gaming news while my iPad freezes, which is great timing. I do have one more bit, <laughs> um, and that is PlayStation and Discord have reached a deal with each other. It was uh, long rumoured that Microsoft, in fact, was trying to um, acquire Discord for like a billion dollars or something ludicrous, but PlayStation have now made a deal with the company and we will see a um, integration with the PS5 and I think the PS4, just all PlayStation products um, with Discord by next year. So yeah, I mean, as as Thank people God. who use Discord a lot, especially when they're gaming, be very helpful. <laughs> it would be very helpful because that means we don't have to have double earphones in. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that will be something to look forward to. Uh, for any fans out there uh one more bit of news as well among us is coming to playstation finally a, b- a bit late <laughs> a bit the, the, uh, the dead uh, game is coming to a different console yeah maybe it'll give it a bit of life but it will also have exclusive ratchet and clank well um, the content. new map was supposed to give it a bit of life and it's not really <laughs> well the problem but that's was the story we knew about the new map for like seven months and it took them seven months to bring out a new map and i get it's a small development team (laughs) come on come on surely surely, with the amount of money you've made come on and then they kind of made it a bit too big and complex for the casual players i think as well so they didn't really bring them back it's more the hardcore it's it's like um, i don't know if you know who people like disguise toast are but he's like a big name in like the Among Us community, and even like a couple of weeks ago, or maybe just a week ago, he came out and said basically, "I'm kind of done with the game. It's it's kind of, it, it lost its luster, even with the new map out. The only thing that really keeps it going are the mods, like all of the mods that people make. But it's just sad to think like these are mods and they've improved the game so much." But they're so simple that the developers could dab them in themselves, but they just haven't. But yeah, it is coming to Among Us. Even uh, it, it's, yeah. Among Us is coming to PlayStation, <laughs> but even though we just slagged it off a lot, it's still a good game. But whether you get your enjoyment out of it is up to you. If you can get a big group of friends together, there you go. But yeah, we'll we'll move on to. I guess some TV and movie news, which I have quite a bit of, but I'll let you go first, Sean. 
So I only know. really have the one, which is we have a new release date for the Loki series. And a new day that will be released on. You mm-hmm. see, previously with One Division and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, episodes were released on a Friday. Uh, Loki will be released the first episode on the 9th of June, 2021, which is a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why they did this. Um, not quite sure. Yeah, <laughs> why this makes any sense or for what reason? Um, you know what? I, I don't mind it. We're fine, but it helps us out for the podcast if we need to talk about it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's the good thing. Uh, but I have a lot more Marvel news that was released this week. A lot of it. So um, Morbius, the movie starring Jared Leto, which is kind of a Spider-Man spin-off, uh, will be released at a different date. It was originally supposed to be released somewhere else. Apparently this article doesn't have it. Oh, no. Uh, it was originally uh, scheduled to be released on March 19th. And it will now premiere in theatres on October 8th, according to Variety. So, uh, yeah, if anyone was expecting that movie to be out already, you are wrong. (laughs) So that is one piece of news. We also got um, confirmed release dates for every single movie coming out in the next few years, including some titles for said movies. So I'll go through each one Um, for now. Where where are they? Here they are. Uh, Black Widow is uh, set to be released on July 9th. We already knew this. Nothing surprising there. We'll see. We'll see. Um, (laughs) Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings will be released on September 3rd, 2021. I personally want to see War Machine show up in this because the Iron Man series has a big connection to... The Ten Rings, considering they kidnapped Iron Man in the first movie. <laughs> so um, that would be an interesting thing. But yeah, uh, we'll wait and see how that turns out. There was footage for all this, but I think we talked about it last week. But this week, we got a first look at The Eternals, which has a very star studded cast, <laughs> um, which include Richard Madden, uh, Kamal N- uh, Nanjiani, um, Kit Harrington's in it as well. Gemma Chan, Selma Hayek, Angelina Jolie, ton of people. But that one is set to release on November fifth, uh, twenty twenty one. And we move on to the movie. Oh no, we don't. We got one more movie coming out just before Christmas, December seventeenth. That will be Spider Man No Way Home. That was confirmed for then. Now we move on to the movies for next year. Um, March 25th, uh, 5th, 2022, we'll see the release of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, kind of a continuation of WandaVision as well, because we'll see um, Scarlet Witch show up again. Interesting to see where that goes. May 6th, 2022, we'll see Four Love and Thunder uh, come to our screens. Uh, Taiki Waititi will be returning, along with Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, and Natalie Portman, who will be also returning. Now's one of the movies that we've got an actual title for. That is the Black Panther sequel, which will be titled Black Panther Wakanda Forever. July 8th, 2022 is the release date for that. Um, It's said that the movie will kind of respect the legacy of Chadwick Boseman as the character, but they've decided not to recast him. And I've seen a lot of criticism of this online. Like a lot of people have come to terms with the fact that This character probably should be recast just for the simple fact that it will keep the legacy going. But they decided not to. I still they'll they'll still use Black Panther. I think like they'll probably give it to Shuri. Yeah, Yeah. the title of Black Panther will stay. (laughs) But I I think I think Shuri will become the new Black Panther, and they won't have a uh, T'Challa, which is interesting. But we'll see what they do. I'm not going to critique it too much. Um, oh no, this is a bad time. My iPad's not having a good time of it. Today. I think <laughs> well, I can talk about that. I think they the way to word this, um, probably quite lucky in a sense of the position that the films are in, mm-hmm. of the they still have a lot of freedom of like when they can set the movies because yeah. obviously they can take it any time in the past, any time in the future, because they said they've said this it will explore like the world of Wakanda more. Yeah. So 
they don't necessarily have to do a direct continuation of the last one that they can literally jump about which gives them more freedom to recast certain people not recast but then have different characters while still having the world exploring the world and the black panther so Mm -hmm. In a yeah, way, yeah. in the most respectful way possible, <laughs> they are lucky in the position that they are in that they still have that freedom and they're not like in the middle of a. Yeah, they're not completely um, in the shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, the Blade movie, or I thought it was a TV show, but it's a movie apparently, um, hasn't got a release date, but it's likely to release towards the end of next year. Um, another movie that actually has a title now is the sequel to Captain Marvel, which will be called The Marvels, uh, which will release November 11th, 2022. It will probably come off the back of the Miss Marvel TV show, um, which is why it's going to be called The Marvels. Makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that's that's coming out. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is the movie that will be out in February of 2023, February 17th to be exact. God, I hope it's better than the last one. Yeah, so do I. But I'm also surprised do it's taking this long. Do something more than just chase something around the city. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was it was pretty bad. I, I'm surprised it's taking this long for that to come out. I thought it'd be one of the first movies, but... Uh, so it's yeah. been a while since the last one, hasn't it? Yeah. And I would like to I, tell you that. I wish I knew the date, but I don't, so... I think the final confirmed release date on this list is May 5th, 2023, which will see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 come to our screens. James Gunn is currently stuck directing the suicide. Well, he's done directing it, but that's why the movie is being delayed because he was fired by Disney and picked up by Warner Brothers and doing a different movie. So Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be out in 2023 and uh yeah uh fantastic four it's no release date yet but expect it to come in 2023 i'd expect other than that we have no other news about marvel so it's time to move on to dc um it was confirmed that uh carlos valdez and tom Kavanagh, who play cisco and wells in the flash tv show will be leaving um after season seven so they will not be here for season eight as someone who loved the cw shows in their early days i kind of don't care anymore (laughs) the show should have ended about five seasons ago because they really lost their way and the writing's been abysmal and i want everyone to know that first season awesome one of the best superhero shows ever season two okay not bad it was pretty good uh season three eh the rest of them abysmal so <laughs> i'm not surprised and i'm glad they're getting to go on to do better things because i think they're good actors and deserve to be uh given that space to uh improve so yeah that is my uh marvel and dc news there is a bit more um dexter dexter it was announced a while ago that dexter the tv series would be getting a limited series continuation Dexter is known to um, basically have had a shit ending. One of one of the te- most terrible endings in it's, TV. So show annoying because the thing is, <laughs> it was working so well until yeah. they did that very last bit. Like yeah. if they'd cut it probably like two minutes earlier, it would have been fine. <laughs> That's what annoyed me about the ending. I can not personally comment on it because I've only seen up to season four, and I never went back to it <laughs> so um yeah, yeah. Think, oh, so frustrating <laughs> i don't obviously i don't know if you are with this now you will go back to watch the rest of it so i don't really want to say too much i don't know but yeah i'm, I'm not that bothered but but i i know yeah. what basically happens i do know what fair, happens if the ending that it, it should have ended happened there wouldn't be another series so <laughs> you can kind of guess <laughs> yeah well it was announced that the original show showrunners will definitely be back and they released a teaser trailer for it, which you can find online if you're excited. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, well, ooh, ooh, have we have we got anything else? Have, have I been tricked? Oh no, we do have one little bit, one tiny little bit, and that is Zack Snyder's Justice League will be releasing um, in the UK on both Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD soon. Do you know when that date is, Sean? 
No, I do not. Tell me, Jimmy. Tell me. It's May 24th, 2021. So very soon. Woo! This month. Um, anyone who hasn't seen it and doesn't want to fork out any money for it, or didn't want to fork out any money for it um, at the time, can get their hands on a Blu-ray or Ultra HD uh, copy very soon. In the UK, in fact. So, yeah. I think that's all of my... I have a long list. This is a... I really should have structured this better. So sorry for looking down a lot <laughs> during this podcast, but we're trying. Try, I'm just trying we're to hurry it along. Prepared. I'm just trying to hurry it along. I'm not gonna lie. I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, we'll move on to some, uh, I guess, pop culture and sports, kind of. Um, so I'll start it off with a bit of wrestling. Just one little bit of wrestling because it caused a bit of controversy. Um, Eva Marie, you may know her from the the good old wrestling days of. <laughs> the mid 20 2010s um much hated among the wrestling cr- crowd she's returning the greatest era <laughs> <laughs> she's returning to... the attitude era it's all about the mid 2010s <laughs> she's returning to it's wwe right. just after wwe let off um let, not let off let go of a bunch of great um women's talent they brought back eva marie one of the most hated women's wrestlers ever um Although she looks uh, good now, well, I mean, she looked good before, but she, her presentation looks a lot better here. And she's, it's said to that she's been training for a long time and she's been with the company since around October. So this isn't total surprise, but yeah, it has been confirmed that she will be turning up soon. Um, we also got a bit of, um, <laughs> a bit of drama at a press conference yesterday <laughs> that would be the press <laughs> conference between logan paul and floyd mayweather yes that is actually still happening um but it didn't involve logan it involved jake paul who stole floyd He's mayweather's hat. brother <laughs> he stole floyd mayweather's hat and then got clocked in the face by one of his bodyguards and also mayweather afterwards as well well have you also seen that now um today uh jake paul actually now has a Got your hat tattoo, and he also released merchandise for Got Your Hat, which is definitely wasn't planned. He definitely yeah. really planned to do this. Actually. Yeah, he definitely got that turnaround. Uh, yeah, in less so than twenty-four hours. We're not really going to give him much more time, but that is a thing that is happening. <laughs> and it was inter- It was. I found about that. It was interesting to see like Mayweather lose his head. Like you mm. would have thought he'd have been a bit more composed, especially like leading up to a fight and something like that. Especially with like who he is, like yeah. you'd have thought he would just been there, like I'm bigger than you. Not as in like stature, but as in like as a name sort of thing. I, I've like I'm huge, like I'm this great big personality in the boxing world. Like, yeah. I don't need to lower myself down to you. And to be honest, for me, something like that it loses a bit of respect for him because it's a bit like why does he need to lose his head? Going, I'm gonna fucking kill him. Blah blah. It's like. He's just a kid and he's he's tried to wind you up and you've fallen for it. Yeah. I mean don't really but care. At the same I hope time, he does. <laughs> yeah. So in the position you'd probably would lose your head and stuff like that, but I just feel like it's a bit kind of like you're this great box great fighter. I think why have you lowered yourself down to his standard of letting him get you all riled up? It's just uh <laughs> <laughs> a bit stupid really, isn't you it? You know but... we ask that a lot in life. But at least he gave him a black eye and a broken tooth, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that is a thing that definitely happened. And I guess we'll stay tuned to see where that goes. Um, we have confirmation of a few finals that will be taking place in football as well. As a new manager that will be taking on a team that uh, was in the semi-final <laughs> of one of the said competitions. Uh, Jose Mourinho will be taking over Roma uh, during next season. After they got battered. After, <laughs> well, well, the first leg, yes. Second leg, they... Second leg, bit, but... we were abysmal. But, I mean, 8-5. It's a very entertaining two, um, two fixtures for the semi-finals. So any casual fan probably got entertained from it. Uh, but we have the Europa League final, which will be... Manchester United versus Villarreal, who completely dominated Arsenal. 
Arsenal over two legs. Good evening, Arsenal fans. <laughs> Good evening. Arsenal over two legs only had three shots on target, apparently, which is amazing. <laughs> um, and they scored really, one, which was mad. a penalty. So, <laughs> you know... Yeah, Hashtag but, Arteta out, question but, mark. Um, Villarreal versus Man United will take place here on the 26th of May at 8 o'clock. Um, that is a Wednesday, as you may know, and it will be in uh, Gdansk, or not Vod- not to get uh, mixed up with Verdansk, Verdansk, in Gdansk. You know, in Gdansk. <laughs> um, but the Champions League final will take place on the 29th of May at 8 o'clock. And that will be an all-English final featuring Manchester City and Chelsea. Uh, this is Manchester City's first final in the Champions League. They'll be hoping to win it. Let's hope they don't. <laughs> so I hope they don't, because yeah. I want the memes to stand. Yeah, be funny. Aguero <laughs> in his last season, he's got to win it. He's got to know. It is an interesting final, though, because it's being held in Istanbul, which mm-hmm. should have been held. the final should have been held last year, been moved to this year, and... Well, there's been a bit of controversy about it because it's two English teams travelling all the way to Turkey to During go and play in a yeah mid pandemic in a country that's still in a lockdown. In and a, everyone's going in a country that has just been added to um, England's uh, <laughs> the UK's banned list, the red, the red list, whatever they call it. Yeah, so there was a call to bring the final to England. Um, it was impossible for them for it to be in Wembley because the playoff finals are mm-hmm. on that day. Um, Aston Villa, Villa did actually, yeah, they <laughs> did put their names forward. They offered Villa Park to UEFA, mm-hmm. but it doesn't appear that UEFA is going to take them up on it. Um, so. so the sensible choice would have been to put it there. It's a middle ground for both teams. It's in the country where they're both from, so it minimises travel. So it's the one that makes sense. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, Villa Park's not a UEFA standard stadium. Um, I don't know how easily they could get it to the standard. I don't know what they're missing. Surely um, they could use like any other Premier League ground or something that is to the standard Old Trafford. They could, but obviously I've, it probably also comes down to because at that point the season ended. So if teams have already made plans on refurbishing pitches or whatever work they do to the pitch post season, they probably would have started it already. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously you've also got to sort out your security, like with your police and everything, your your traffic or stuff like that. And also UEFA will want their fat paycheck from Istanbul. Yeah, so <laughs> they're not going to move it <laughs> yeah, unless good. unless Aston Villa could come up with a big sum of money to go and offer it to them to go <laughs> come use this. Um, I doubt it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so I only have one more thing to talk about here, which is the Old Trafford protests. Um, to do with the Glazers, what? Glazers out you know all of that thing um a bunch of uh, manchester united fans went and protested against the glazers some even made their way onto the pitch itself um, which completely held up the game and in the end cancelled the fixture between manchester united and liverpool one of the biggest games of the season big statement um (laughs) and sky decided they wanted to vilify all these fans despite the fact that it was a small minority that probably did something bad you know something a bit too far the thing is you say that it's bad i've seen some clips which literally shows the stewards letting people into the stadium no no yeah no that was fine break it like it wasn't really a for obviously they shouldn't be there they should be on the pitch they shouldn't be in the stadium because they're not allowed but at the end of the day the stewards open the gates for them it's not like they were smashing windows and breaking down doors to get in they were literally let through a gate <laughs> And the quality of the commentators and pundits that Sky has are ridiculous. Have you seen what Graham Sooner said as well? Oh, where, yeah. was, where, where was this energy when they were winning titles? Were you not watching football in 2010? We, so we were still winning pro- Premier League titles back then. We so won the Andrew Champions Ferguson, League not after they were that. protesting. Yeah. And it's also brave of a man uh, who was like condemning the fans for this big statement from a guy who literally went and planted a massive Galatasaray yeah. flag in the middle of the pitch at Fenerbahce. He should know. Which is a huge he should know better, which is why it's ridiculous. And, you know, I'm surprised he didn't blame it on Pogba. He probably should yeah, have. Yeah, Pogba should have been doing more. Why, why was he not at the, at the hotel already uh, helping security out? Disgraceful from him. Pogba Can't should have been it. headbutting people at the gates. That's all I'm saying. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Anyway, that happened. Um, Avram Glazer was confronted in uh, america i think in miami i think they live in miami <laughs> yeah. don't um he was confronted 
refused to comment, didn't say a single word, looked like an absolute cunt. If he'd said, like, I'm so sorry or something and just left it at that, it it would have Not been even so that. much better. It would have been so no, much better. I would have fucking backed him more if he turned and went, don't give a shit. If he, he didn't if say he anything. Said, he yeah, just didn't say anything. Even if he had said, I don't care. Like, I would have backed it more. So the fact that he refused to say anything, it just shows that he knows he's in the wrong. That's the thing. Because he doesn't want to say anything, he knows he's in the shit and he's done something wrong. Either back yourself or apologise. Don't just sit in the middle and do nothing because it makes you look like a twat. Yeah. And as of today, um, Manchester United released a statement from the Glazers. Uh, I haven't read the whole statement because I honestly don't give a fuck about what they say. But from the reaction and the general basis, they said... They want fans to have more of a stake in the company. Um, they might end up giving more shares out to the fans. Being and every- 2%. <laughs> and everyone's like, so you're trying to, you're just, you're just going to give us handouts. We don't want handouts. We want you out of the club. <laughs> we, we want a voice. We don't want, we don't want, hi, hi, my name's, my name's random Man United fan. You know, can you do this, yeah, please? Have, we want have this a voice. Not point, not, 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 not 1% share <laughs> in this football club, which is equivalent to about 20p, and will mean absolutely nothing because you'll have no you won't have no say in anything, you'll get nothing from it. But here, have this. It's a complete, nothing will change. It's a complete PR trick. <laughs> this summer, they'll probably spend big on big players just to try and appease the fans. And I hope the fans don't give in. I hope they keep going. You know, let them spend their money. I'm very happy for them to spend their money to buy us players. Do that, but we're still gonna we're still gonna have a go. <laughs> we're still gonna keep uh, protesting, keep on going, and the same can be said about a lot of other clubs. You know, I'm sure Liverpool fans will try to keep it up. Uh, I know, I know they've not been as vocal, but that doesn't mean so that behind the scenes they so aren't. For me, personally, the Liverpool one. Um, well, there's two things I want to say about it. One for me is that. Obviously, um, FSG aren't as hated as the Glazers. FSG yeah. have done some good for Liverpool um, in the past um, with a few bad things. That obviously, every time they've kind of met resistance and they've gone back on it, uh, thankfully. But the other thing is that um, I can't remember the name of the group. I think, oh, Spirit of Shanghai, I think it is, actually held talks with FSG um, about going forward about making sure that so many members from Spirit of Shankly are on the board and are involved in making decisions and that any repercussions like money-wise from this whole Super League fallout will be paid for by FSG themselves and not the club. So they have been doing a lot to work with them. There That's won't fair. be a massive protest overhaul trying to kick them out because, as I said, they have done a lot of good for the club. Um, being able to actually grow us massively, um, bring in players and increase the quality of football. So I'm, I'm happy for them to stay as long as they don't try something like this again. Yeah, Arsenal fans probably don't feel the same way about their ownership, but we won't go into oh, too yeah. much detail there. We are back. We are back to the we main event. We didn't, we didn't leave. We, we, left. we didn't leave. That jump cut that you've just seen did not happen. Doesn't exist. Does it, doesn't exist. Definitely <laughs> not half an hour later than when the last thing we just heard. <laughs> Not at all. But time for our Premier League Hall of Fame uh, nominees, thoughts, debate, whatever. We'll see where it goes. Um, I think the first thing to discuss is the fact that we're getting a Premier League Hall of Fame. Uh, we've known about it for a, a few weeks now, at least, you know, a, a little while. Um, we know that Alan Shearer and Thierry Henry will be the first inductees, two of, you know, football's most well-known decorated i guess players uh well premier league's most decorated so, shira is a out of the bat shira definitely has to be there because he holds the record <laughs> for the most goals in the premier league there is no debate there whatsoever um and then for me personally Henry has to go in as well because he like the age that we are growing up like we we were a bit too late for shira i think we got him at the end yeah more definitely career, too late. like we didn't really get the Blackburn days. We didn't get like peak Newcastle. Um, we got the end, whereas it was prime Henri when we were growing up, really getting into football. So he's like, for me, Terry Henry is like the first big main striker, like that real, like that person who the team you support, you fear him. He's mm-hmm. like that first big one for me, and he's just unbelievable. Um, 
So it's absolutely insane. Um, sad that he didn't get to see him longer in the Premier League, that he went to Barcelona, obviously. But for me, right, two first choices. I'm never going to argue with that. Yeah. Um, so we'll go down the list of nominees. Do you want to do it or should I do it? Oh, I can do it. It's fine. Okay. I like doing names. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know how many there are. I didn't count. Uh, there's about um, 15, I think. Yeah, but these are these are the people who are up next to go in. I believe, is it... Who, how many more have been inducted this year? Is it just one more? <laughs> uh, not sure. Okay, but either way, sure. these people are now going to a public vote for the next ones to go in. Um, and they are Tony Adams, David Beckham, Dennis Burkamp, Sol Campbell, Eric Cantona, Andy Cole, Ashley Cole, Didier Drogba, Les Ferdinand, Rio Ferdinand, Robbie Fowler, Steven Gerrard, Roy Keane, Frank Lampard, Matt Letizier, Michael Owen, Peter Schmeichel, Paul Scholes, John Terry, Robin Van Persie, Nemanja Vidic, Patrick Vieira, and Ian Wright. That's the first time I've read out a list of names and haven't butchered a single one because I actually know who these people are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got your bad bunny. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through six players from this list. It has to be from this list. So who, we've chosen six. Yeah, who, who we would like think, to think. Yeah, who we think could be next. Or we'd like to. Um, our our opinions could easily change. You know, these are just six players that we picked that at the time we thought, yeah, these these have to be in. But any all of these players could be in. That's the thing. Oh yeah, the the thing. I think like a blanket statement is that all of these players should be put in at some point. Mm -hmm. Like this is just obviously who we'd put in next, but. In my view, anyway, every single one of these players in the next few years should be put in before yeah. anybody else. Yeah, because yeah. obviously um, we spoke about this obviously not on camera before. There are a few players who like just miss out. Um, so the likes of Company and Rooney, who for me, if he had retired in time to be considered for this, Rooney would be one of my people to put in there. I was I was gonna say. Um... Do you want to say a player as well who's not on this list who you'd think go in? Okay, but mine was going mine. mine was going to be Rooney. So I think <laughs> so we've kind of be, just answered that yeah. question. So we so won't I do think, that. <laughs> we'll just, so well, we will. We just did it. Deserve to be there. Can't so be, there yeah. are others, obviously notable people who in the future will probably come into contention and speak about. It. We can probably talk about that afterwards. Maybe of to agree on that. Maybe some other people who mm -hmm. um, maybe either haven't retired yet who are likely to be put in or ones who are less like thought about maybe yeah so we'll get on with it I, I'll, I'll go first since you did the names uh, yep. my thought process behind this was we're getting two forwards already in so while i see a robbie fowler on this list who you know amazing player i didn't want to put him on because we've got two forwards so i fought other positions um so i'll start off with uh, david beckham as a united fan massive influence on my childhood he's such a a big icon within the football world as a whole as well and i know this is strictly just premier league but when you hear football my mind goes to good old days of david beckham you know bend it like beckham the good old days um so for me david beckham's such a big influence and as a united fan he's one of my favorite players ever so i did want to put him on this list and here's my number one. There are players that I would have wanted, but I've tried to... While, while there are a few ex-United players on this list, I, I won't deny, um, that's just because that's what I've experienced in my life, so it's hard to not put them on. And these are good players, you know. Um, I would have liked to put more, but I'm trying to be balanced, and there are players that deserve to go in beforehand. Um, next on my list is, well, the three next players on my list are kind of you have to put them all in you know you, it can't just be one over this, the other oh it's... come on to it this is my issue with my list at the yeah. moment i'll come on to it later but i know where you're going with this and this has been an issue with mine so <laughs> i had a debate with i think it was adam not a debate but like a kind of conversation where um he was like oh i put um john terry on the list and i was like yeah, he's been there for a long time, but he's he's not been long retired. And you can say that about a lot of players, I guess. But 
like when when we were going up against teams i didn't think i got worried about john terry you know he uh, you should worry about john terry but in my head i'd be like i gotta worry about steven gerrard or i gotta look out for frank lampard or i'm guessing a lot of opposing teams would have been oh we've got to look out for paul skulls so you get my second third and fourth pick who are frank lampard um steven gerrard and paul skulls because i while while i'm a bigger paul skulls fan for obvious reasons i'm not going to sit here and say he's definitively the best in my opinion frank lampard probably could be labeled the best i don't think gerrard is but he's such an influential player one of the most well-known players in Premier League history. Uh, I'm going to counter that with he has the most PFA uh, Team of the Year nominations. That is totally fair. So, <laughs> <laughs> but there's there you is could argue he is better. There is another Don't player for this. When we're, we're not going to go into the <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the point. Anyone because... could go on it. Anyone could go. Yeah. On. Um, but obviously, the debate <laughs> of these three is a debate that's gone on for so many years that <laughs> there's. Yeah. It would it would make the end of this video way too long to go <laughs> into just that. Exactly. <laughs> um, and my last two players are both ex Man United players, but one of them I will be swayed on. It was just very hard for me to know who I wanted in that position. Um, but this one I will not be swayed on, and that is Peter Schmeichel, probably the best Premier League keeper in history. I grew up more in the Van der Sar era, so you know it's kind of but but when you see peter schmeichel he's such an influence on manchester united as a team he's <laughs> i know it doesn't count but he, even his son is <laughs> his son is <laughs> a major goalkeeper <laughs> for a major premier league team you know like it just runs in the family and you just gotta you just gotta love the man you gotta love the man and i think because i'm trying to go for different positions i know i just put three four four midfielders sorry um but you know midfield is such a dominant uh position that it's very hard to not put them on there but um peter schmeichel if i had to pick a goalkeeper it has to be peter schmeichel and my last one which is one i'm very happy to debate i'm very happy to give up on um and that is rio ferdinand <laughs> you know a lot of people say nah a lot of people might put John Terry over him, and that's fair. As a United fan, he's been more of an influence on me, which is why I have to put him in, uh, over that. And I know I could be a bit more, you know, be a bit less biased, but I'm going to be a bit biased here because I'm open to uh, to debate, uh, debate easily. Um, I genuinely think Vidic might be the better player, but Rio Ferdinand did it way longer, which is the reason I put him on here. Um, and he is he is a he's, he's a big name, you know he's. He's, he's the name, if you think of the best Premier League uh, centre-backs, some people might think, uh, you know, just just anyone else. But for me, it'd be like Rio Ferdinand and Vidic, you know. So I had to pick Rio Ferdinand for that. But I am open to debate on that one. And um, I was, like I was uh, talking about earlier, we had a bit of a discussion and Michael Owen came up in conversation. I'm not going to put him on the list, obviously. I've reached my six, but I'd like to bring him up here. I don't know if you've got him. I'd highly doubt it. Um, but he's he's a great player, fantastic player, and he's the only player on the actual list that's won a Ballon d'Or. Um, but the but... problem is <laughs> is after he left. The problem is after he left Liverpool. So he spent a year at Madrid. He came back. And he was fucking wank. It's like the problem. Everyone knows why is that it was way too early. Like how much he was playing when he was younger um, gave him a lot of in, like, problems with injuries. But yeah, that period from two thousand and five to twenty thirteen at Man U, Newcastle, Stoke just wasn't the same. But it, he's he's one of those players that made every club that he's been to hate him. You know, it's oh, the lack yeah. of lack of loyalty. Um, excellent player, so not, great player. Personally, for me, obviously, that shouldn't really come into this. Like, no. I uh, wouldn't merit somebody um, higher up the list to go in because they stayed at one club more than no, another who not. jumped around. But I think it's just when you look at the players on this list, there's a lot of them who did what they did for a lot longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Whereas 
although Owen was fantastic and was amazing when he was younger in that first spell when he was at Liverpool um, it, it was just a bit short lived compared to a lot of the others like if you look at people like we said Lampard's goals uh, Gerard, Terry those sort of people did it for so long and yeah. like, so consistent as well it's like even on a bad season it was still a better season than most of the players in the league whereas Owen didn't have that for the length of time yeah, you could argue that obviously you could obviously say that he definitely he was better than those players at his prime, which obviously was early in his career because he was a person who won the Ballon d'Or. But it's just for me, something like this, I think, is a bit more like a legacy thing of they were at the, the top for, for a long period of time. Yeah, does he deserve with... to go in? Yes. Does he deserve to go in now? No. So he wouldn't be next on my list. Yeah, he'd be in there at some point, but he's not immediate. I'm banging him in right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so and another reason I didn't put him in is because I was trying to stay away from forwards. <laughs> so, you know, that that goes hand in hand with that. But that's my six: David Beckham, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Peter Schmeichel, Paul Scholes, and Rio Ferdinand. Off to you. So I currently only have five, with the last one up for debate. <laughs> Because I can't fully decide. Okay. Um, so my first one, straight away, and this is it's probably going to sound weird to you, but my first um, immediate thought is Lampard. Which, obviously, anyone who's a Liverpool fan, people would think I'd sway toward Gerrard in that way. But for me, um, Lampard has to go in and has to be one of the... Well, okay, this is where my, de- my own debate head comes in. Because for me, I think he has to be one of the next. Because... His goal-scoring record is ridiculous. He's the highest-scoring midfielder in the Premier League. He has more Premier League goals than most strikers in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, admittedly, he did it for a lot longer than a lot of the strikers below him. But he was just fantastic. He did it. He performed so well and so consistently under so many different managers over such a long period of time that, for me, he is one of the best and has to be in there. My only issue, I think, it's not a reasoning, it's more of a sentimental thing, is that I think Lampard, Gerald and Scholes should all be put in together. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, <laughs> I, I think it would be nice. And also then, it's it kind of keeps that argument of who is better alive longer. Just have because a class of midfielders go in. You know? So as soon as you put one of them in before the other... It gives more ammunition for someone to go, oh, that plays better. And everyone clearly thinks it because they put him in the Hall of Fame first. But if you put them all three in together, you keep that debate going on longer. Um, and it's just like quite poetic of how those three were always the ones at the same time, kind of like competing for that, oh, they, like the best midfielder in the league at the same time. Yeah. So Jared is the other one on my list, um, purely because growing up as a Liverpool fan, he was my idol. Um, and I think most, if not all, Liverpool fans my age will probably say the same thing. Um, what he did to carry that team as much as he did for the years he did through some really shit years um, was amazing. But he, and he's one of those few people, one of those few players that completely changes the game. And he has such big moments in games that you remember, like the Olympiacos goal, which set up for... Um, the year we won the championship. Like his sending off against Manchester United, his slip against Chelsea, all of that. <laughs> Sorry, just go. Uh, obviously, in that final himself as being the guy to rally the team together. You've got that strike against West Ham in the FA Cup final. Um, there was another one I had in my head that I've completely forgotten about, which is a bit annoying now. But he is that sort of person who would take the team by the scruff neck and drag them to a victory. He he was a game changer, and. Yeah. And obviously, I didn't. Obviously, I said I would never put someone um, higher up for staying at a team. But obviously, personally for me, it obviously sticks with me more that he did stay at Liverpool, despite the fact of how many times it was. He could have left. Other, yeah. yeah, he could have left. Other places were coming for him, and he didn't. He stayed. See, that means a lot to me. And as I said earlier, he's the player with the most PFA Team of the Year um, nominations, which shows what the rest of his players, other rest of the players in the league, thought of him. Um, that is a player-based award mm-hmm. um, and just how good they thought he was and 
it it really saddens me of that time that he he couldn't be rewarded with a Premier League victory, and it was so close as well that it would have topped off something amazing for him. Yeah. Um, I don't currently have scores on my list purely because I put the other two above him. Like I'm not denying that he was a great player, like the balls that he could play, the goals he has scored, everything like that. He he was a great player. But personally, because obviously the thing with Liverpool, I'll always side with Gerard more. Because of the stats, I then side with Lampard a bit more. Obviously, I have that space left, which I was debating putting him in because of keeping with the all three of them together. But I'm still not sure. Um, I completely agree with you on uh, Schmeichel. Definitely has to be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, greatest goalkeeper of the Premier League era. Um, if we talk about other players to come in, there are a couple of other goalkeepers who I believe um, should be in the, the mix. Um, obviously, it's a bit more difficult, I think, with goalkeepers because strikers are easy ones to put in because you see how many goals they score yeah. and it's an easy one to do. I think people seem to overlook goalkeepers and defenders a lot. Um, but I don't think... So I think there's some of the people who could be in contention and should be... Um, but I'd definitely put Schmeichel in. Um, I was also making an argument earlier to you that I believe that it should be some of the older players that get put in first and they should work their way forward. Yeah. Most of my list goes against this because I do have Terry on there. Again, it comes through the fact of how long he did it for. The same sort of reasons as Lampard, of that they had very similar careers of like the length and the timings of everything. Um, obviously played together for a long time under those different managers performed so well so he won the league back in the mid 2000s stayed with the team kept at that high level came back and won it again later on and for me he was like the last of one of those proper true British defenders who would give everything put everything on the line literally put his body on the line sometimes to do everything to stop that ball going in the back of the net and I think he was an incredible defender yeah, yeah. I'd, so I'd, I'd I put agree. him in. I agree. Um, like, I, I just... <laughs> with, with, like I said before, Terry was such a good player. It's just, uh, I'm... <laughs> As a United fan, I had to sit there and think, do I want Rio Ferdinand in? Because I know Ferdinand is, or was, at that level, you know? It's a very hard distinction to pick betw- uh, between the two. Especially if you support one of the clubs, you know. Yeah. So, I'm so, like, I'm all for like, I'd 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 be fine if Terry went in ahead of Ferdinand. That's why I said it was kind of my mixed pick, but they're both. So it could be one of those where you think of it like Gerard Scholes and Lampard that those two should be put together because the debate of who is better between those two is kind of on the same wavelength of that sort of yeah. quality against each other. Of it's very difficult to to compare them and actually pick who was better. Um, and the final one was actually uh, Roy Keane. Um, yeah, I really contemplated putting him in as well, but I was like, I've got too many United players. <laughs> Stop somewhere. <laughs> um, just again, unbelievable player. Uh, the length he did it, uh, did it more than just Man United. I believe isn't he the only um, person. Was it? So it's something stupid. Like he's the only player to have been included in a team of the year from a relegated team. I believe he has that stat of for Forest. Forest, yeah. It would um, have been for, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't. I'm be surprised. sure. I'm sure that there's some sort of record like that. Um, and yeah, again, unbelievable player, a game changing player. Yeah. So I have that this sixth spot. And I have a couple. Of, I'm going to put a couple of names out on who could go in there. So I've already said Skulls. Yeah. Um. More well, obviously, great player. Um. Drawing with the other two. Um. Along with my thing of older players should go in. Uh. I've debated putting Tony Adams on the list. Um. Because of how influential he was for Arsenal, as well. Um. During the time he was there, and as captain, and everything. Uh, he again one of those proper British defenders. Um. And a way of having an older one in. Uh, to bring through, um, Andy Cole definitely needs to be in the um, in the discussion for me. Again, that sort of, that goal scoring record, um, with second highest in the league, and the way 
it's the problem is like all those United players together. You can make a case for any of them going how good they were. But <laughs> yeah. it's also like how many of them made each other look good and like just because you could you can't really tell if you take them out of the team how well they'd be. It's like but Andy Cole was just an amazing striker as well at the same time. Mm. Um Ashley Cole I'd definitely debate putting in uh for me best fullback the Premier League has seen. Definitely in recent time, like more modern times anyway. Yeah. Um just incredibly consistent. Um, yeah, I I don't think we've seen anyone near that level and we won't for a while. Um so I think he has to be in contention. But again, it's more of those I see even though when you look at his like active time, it started in nineteen ninety nine, but it's the through to twenty fourteen that then for me, because like this era of players, the same with Lampard, Gerard, Scholes, all, all those, Ashley Cole. For me, because they were like the prime era for me when growing up of watching football, it doesn't feel like they should be like in a Hall of Fame yet. Yeah. They shouldn't be like a legacy player yet. It's, be to me, it's still for like, years, yeah, how to me in my head, it still feels like, oh, it wasn't that long ago they were playing. Obviously, Ashley Cole <laughs> stopped playing seven years ago. Mm. Which seems ridiculous, and it didn't seem like it was that long, so that's why I kind of go against that. Um, someone who I feel is going to get overlooked a lot in this discussion is Matt Letizia. Personally, I wouldn't put him in, but mm. he has an incredible goal scoring record as well. And to do it at a team like Southampton, who were never really up there as one of the a major team, I think really um, speaks a lot as well. Um, and I believe another weird stat for you that he is the only player to have two goals from the same game nominated for the goal of the month in the same month. That's it's some weird stat like that as well. <laughs> but I, I do think he'll get overlooked a lot in this. I personally not want to put him on the list. I just wanted to mention him in this discussion. Yeah, it deserves an honor. They all um, deserve an honorable mention. Yeah. Obviously, if you hadn't mentioned it, I would have mentioned about Owen uh, with having that uh, really in the Ballon d'Or and how great he was um, in that early period. And then, so I think you talk about Fernand, you've got to talk about Vidic. Um, yeah. Obviously, they work together very well and it would be difficult to put one in above the other. Um, and it is very difficult to split the two. I'd probably side more with Ferdinand, probably more because he's like a homegrown player sort of thing. Um, I did because he, he did it longer. That was my decision for that. And also, Vidic didn't get scored by Torres. Sorry, Fernand didn't get scored by Torres, but Vidic did. So, you know, not that great. I don't um, <laughs> I, I, I'd um, like to just establish as well. Um, there are players like Andy Cole that I agree with that definitely should be on the list. You know, as a United fan, especially as well. You know, um, but I was personally just trying to avoid forwards more than anything. Yeah, so, so. I kind of accidentally did that. Um, mm-hmm. I weren't planning on. Um, I didn't go into going. I'm not going to put a forward into this. Yeah. Most of the people I've put on the list aren't forwards at the moment. Um. But I kind of get, we have two, so I want to be able to like shine more light other positions because I don't want to get overlooked, sort of thing. Um. Personally, for me, Van Persie shouldn't be in this discussion at the moment. Okay. Um. And I also I don't I don't know if it's just because. He played for obviously two rival teams, but although he was a great player, I wouldn't put him on the same level as some of the other players in here. For me, if I was going to like rank these in order of when I put them in, he would probably be at the bottom. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can see um, that. Yeah, I, I as much as I love uh, Van Persie, I it's just it's like you were saying, it's too soon and. Like, he's such a good player, but I don't know. I so don't know. They're all good the players. Names, yeah, they're all good <laughs> players. But for me, if you look at other names on this list, especially other people in this position, yeah. I feel like those players are more iconic. Whether that's because the other forwards on this list are older players, so you kind of look at them more with that fondness of because they were older players when. I was growing up, sort of thing already. Yeah. That all my life, there's been, there've been these these great players from before, 
whether I like hide them in, uh, hold them in a higher regard, I don't know. But yeah, for me, I'd put them a bit lower down. I I um, will say, even even as a United fan, if you came up to me and said, "Name a Premier League legend," Van Persie wouldn't immediately come to my head. Whereas, yeah, a lot of these players would, you know, like, and others who aren't on the list would probably come to my head before yeah. him. Like we were saying, uh, Rooney, you know, big one. There's just so there's just so many out there that could be on this list as well. But, but yeah, for me, um, to fill that final spot would either be Scold, I think, to keep everyone together. Mm-hmm. Um, or I would. Adams, I would make or... an argument for Tony Adams simply just because um, defenders need a bit more love, you know. But I'm not against skulls. Being yeah, I think them. it'd probably be one of those two. If I'm gonna fill my final spot, spot it'd be one of you those two. One. I think. Got to pick one, Sean. You have. I want to go with Adams. I'm gonna go with Adams. I'm gonna split the three that's up. Um, yeah, I'll put Adams in there. Yeah, that's fair. I, but... I agree. I agree. But because of that, I don't want Lampard and Gerald to go in next. I want all three of them to go in together. Please. Thank you, Premier League. Thank you, everyone voting. <laughs> <laughs> out, uh, so, okay, out of everyone on the list, who do you think should go in first? Then? Okay, now I'm going to go against myself because as I said it, one of the first people I thought about was Lampard because of that record. Um, but I think the, the two it's between for me is Lampard and Schmeichel. Yeah, because you, you, because you've I, taken mine. <laughs> go on, go because on. because I want the three to go together, I'd probably side more with Schmeichel. And just be, again, because I don't think goalkeepers get as much recognition as they deserve, I think it'd be great to put him in there to actually show that. It's a and statement. He would, it's so a he statement was just, to put a goalkeeper in ahead of everyone. Yeah, else. and, so, I, and I, I he was just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Like we said, one of, if not the best, Premier League goalkeeper in history. Um, and like it's such a statement to put him in next that I, uh, he's the only goalkeeper on this list, I'm pretty sure, as well. Yeah. So imagine just putting the only goalkeeper on the list on there. He deserves it as well. Like We're not saying he should be in it soon anyway. Um, but I think for his position... For the position he played, he was top level. He was the best. So how can you not put him at least one of the the first? You know, and you can make arguments about anyone. You can make arguments about Lampard going in before him, um, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't be against it. You know, he is uh, one of the best midfielders in history as well. But to put in a goalkeeper ahead would be such a big statement and proves that um, we're not just we're we're not just there to. Uh, appreciate all the goal scorers. He's got goals. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're He's there got to goals. Appreci- He's got <laughs> <laughs> We're there to appreciate all facets of football, as you should. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so I have some not- notable mentions that I think could have been on this list. Will probably be in the discussion in the next few years. Okay. I do have a very big outsider rogue one, which I you probably wouldn't see coming. Uh, but while we're talking about Schmeichel, um. Other goalkeepers who I think should be on this list, Van der Sar okay, would yeah. definitely be in contention for me, and Petr Cech. I don't know where Petr Cech stands with being in this because he was put on the squad, wasn't he, at Chelsea again for something this season as like a reserve goalkeeper, some shit. I can't yeah, whether that was he was. Yeah. Um, so whether that's now knocked him, so it was something like that. But whether that's now knocked him so that he can't be nominated at the moment because obviously if you didn't know um there were actually um rules and stuff yeah there were rules of who could be nominated um i'll quickly try and there wouldn't be find them. Uh, like while you're looking as well van der Sar would be my second as well uh he might even be my first just because i grew up on van der Sar rather than schmeichel yeah but i also would have said uh Petr Schmeck, uh, Petr Schmeck, jesus christ Petr Cech. Check. i had peter schmeichel on my my mind <laughs> jesus um but yeah i would have put Petr Cech on there as well yeah Petr so <laughs> so the requirements for to be nominated in this batch anyway is that um the players must have been retired by the 1st of august 2020 which obviously this is why Rooney's not on this list this is why company's not on this list um, and probably why Czech won't 
wasn't he might not be on the list anyway, but why he wouldn't be because I think being named in that squad would probably obviously make him not retired yet. Um, because it's just I believe it's just retired from football, not retired from Premier League football. As far as it doesn't specifically say, all, but I'm, I'm assuming retired? that's what it is. Yes. Just trying to think. Yeah, all are. of them definitely retired. Yeah. Um. So on top of that, the players Van Persie just them... retired, didn't he? Last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was like, Van yeah. Persie was he not playing? Yeah, no, he retired. But yeah, um, everyone. So a player must have made a minimum of 250 Premier League appearances unless they have achieved any of the other milestones. So these are the following ones that if they've met one of these, they don't need the 250 appearances. Um, but if they don't have any of these, then they need those, which is made a minimum of 200 Premier League appearances for just one club, been selected to any of the Premier League of the decade or 20-year anniversary teams, won a Premier League Golden Ball or Golden Glove, been voted as Premier League Player of the Season, won three Premier League titles, which for me I think is huge. Like they could have easily just left it as one. Yeah. But I think Freeze a freeze a lot. To be Yeah. Why would you not it's I think not these often. are a bit harsh. It's, like, I get it's it. not often. But I get it early on because you want the best of the best. But there aren't that many players that have won three Premier League titles, which is probably the reason why to keep the list short. Because obviously if you make the criteria too open People are going, well, why is this player not, not in this list? Why is this player? Um, and the f- final one is score 100 Premier League goals or recorded 100, 100 Premier League clean sheets, goalkeepers only. So that's the criteria to get into this list. Yeah, I one or two Premier League titles would have been my pick, just simply yeah. because how many teams have won Premier League titles, you know? Yeah, yeah, but to be fair, you're not a, when a you think of the other criteria, like the playing the games or nominated for team of the decade or beating a team of the season it kind of makes the premier league titles irrelevant because more than likely if you've won three premier league titles you're also going to have got one of those as well because you would have played a lot of games anyway to be able to win the titles you um if you want to talk you're more than likely going to be in contention for a team of the season if you're one of those top players so it, although it yeah. seems harsh, it's kind of end up being redundant, I think. Okay, yeah, it does level itself out. You are right. But yeah, so people who... They're probably ones who, for some reason, didn't make this... Uh, probably didn't match some criteria here, but who I would think... like Ignoring this criteria, who I think would put in... Obviously, I've said Van der Sar, check. Um, obviously, you said Rooney, but he would have missed out because of the retiring. Same with company. Those do have to go in there. Yeah, um, I agree. They, they, they'd be if they were both on this list. I would have put them both on my list yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, when they both retire, I believe Aguero and David Silva should both be in contention for it. Definitely mm-hmm. Aguero. Aguero. Um, Silva, I think he's kind of an unsung hero for Man City. Of the, he was never one of the bigger names like your company, your Aguero, those sort of players. But he was always there, always consistent. I think he deserved to be there. Um, I'm trying to think of others before I give away my rogue one because it's quite funny. I wish um, I'd come prepared for this part because I genuinely, other than other than Rooney, I came with a blank there. <laughs> so I think someone like Carragher should probably at some point. Yeah. Um, again, for how long? Maybe I don't think. Well, I wouldn't put him at the same standard as people like Ferdinand and Terry, but I think he was still up there. Um, for what he did. Yeah. Um. Obviously, when he retires, Cristiano Ronaldo has got to come onto this list. Oh, oh he yeah, was oh. he was amazing when he was at Man U. It pains me to say it, but he was. Um, so he has to be in contention at some point. He'll be on there. Um, sure, surely I'm... he's reached criteria on that list. Oh, There's yeah. no way he hasn't. <laughs> so he must have at least <laughs> got a team of the season somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I'll say my right. So, personally. I think at some point Gareth Barry should be put in contention for this. I don't think which that's is not, much of a rogue which, pick. But I don't think people would think about him. I think doesn't, he's doesn't very he have overlooked. the most Premier League appearances? He has the most yeah. Premier League appearances. Yeah, I, I believe I'd he has. Him on there for that. Say, and it's just he was never a top player. Yeah. Maybe limited by the fact that there were several times we were rumored to go to a bigger team and it never happened. That may have 
been able to push him further. I don't know. He did what but, he could with, with. But he was so yeah. consistent in the league and like, played for. Obviously, it shows because of the amount of appearance he had that he must have been a good player to consistently play in the Premier League. You can't be a shit player and have the most Premier League appearances because you wouldn't be put in the team, you'd be dropped down to lower leagues. So I think at some point he needs to be in contention to be put into there. Um, Obviously, he's not one of your standout performers, performers like your Shearers and your Henrys or whoever. But I think he definitely deserves recognition. Um, I think someone along the same or similar lines is Tim Howard, who again would mm. probably get overlooked going back and especially being a goalkeeper. But again, someone who was there for quite a while. Um, not obviously your stand. He was never to the level of Schmeichel or Van der Sar or whoever, but. He's a name you remember. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I think he's kind of someone you forget about and you forget how long he was actually in the Premier League and yeah. how long but he played for. If someone said, you'd be like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be like, oh yeah, that's someone who deserves it. Yeah. So I think he would be in contention as well. Um, so I'm trying to think of some others, but it's a bit, a bit difficult to think on the fly. I probably should have tried to plan a few more. But... <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we got our point across. Yeah. There are so many players that can be or will be in the uh, Premier League Hall of Fame. In so the future. I think eventually, so eventually, obviously, like someone like Harry Kane will probably will be in contention for it. Um, someone like that. Um, but yeah, obviously, going forward, this will be a continuous thing. I, be- I really hope they don't like put some people in as soon as they retire. I would like to give them a few years. I want them to be able to work forward. So go through the 90s, go through the 2000s first, pick up the players there. And then maybe in like, so say Aguero plays for another three years, say like another five years after he retires, then he gets put in. The same with Kane. Don't put them in as soon as they retire. I think it should be... There should be a Wait a bit. bit and, yeah. yeah. There's, there's obviously exceptions. You know, if a player sadly... A word to pass or something like this you know i i would expect an exception but for you know a player who's just maybe uh uh retired or would be retiring give it a few years and go through the motions with everything everyone else and then uh yeah but also we don't know how they're going to induct people going forward obviously this the first two were put in this next batch is like is being voted on we then don't know, one, what criteria will be put in place for the next group of nominees. And we don't know how they'll be inducted in, whether it will be like a select committee who chooses, whether there will be like honorary awards for certain things, whether it will be yeah. a public vote every time. So you could end up seeing uh, players getting brought in for like singly, like, Gareth Barry may get put in purely because of his appearance ones or if someone was to break Shearer's record they might get put in on that special thing of that sort of thing it, I, so it's not going to be stuck of this is how it's going to be done going forward so they could do things like some special awards to put people in for you never know Yeah, yeah. we shall wait and see uh, but I think we're pretty much done. This has been a long 40-minute segment. <laughs> yep. So so uh, enjoy the one hour and whatever long podcast this is going to be. <laughs> but um, yeah, f- the normal stuff, uh, subscribe, like, follow us on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week. Uh, I will be in the same setting because I wouldn't have been anywhere. But um, the week after, I will be in a different setting. Next week, I don't know what we're going to be doing, but we'll see when we get there. <laughs> I don't know if anything <laughs> big's happening. Um, but in a few weeks' time, we will be talking about um, the end of the Premier League, Premier League season review, looking back, up, uh, back at our um, mid-season and um, pre-season, well, Kind of pre-season. It'll be, pre- it'll be pre-season because we, we didn't change anything at mid-season. We just yeah, yeah. discussed uh, what we did. So. so we will be doing that. But yeah, um, catch us catch us next week. Uh, we'll be normal normal times Friday next week, hopefully, maybe. Uh, I mean, 
will have to be because Hopefully. I can't I can't really record on Friday next week. So <laughs> um yeah, we shall see you soon.